Uh, this is a modeling tutorial of this uh, steering wheel and a uh, quick look there's a few separate pieces really I would say there's the um, this main center piece there's the two kind of handlebars on either side and then there's these little kind of pads which are all separate so I guess if you wanted to count that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but these will just be mirrored over to the other side. So I'll start with the center area and I'm going to begin with a cube and uh, let's scale that up. And I'm going to look at this from the side and just kind of guess how thick it is. Let's say something like that. And this is set up in my top view. So scale it up like so. Just get it to match as closely as I can to the size of this as a starting point. And I want enough um, splits on this to. Uh, be able to have you know something extrude here and then a gap and extrude here and then a gap and then extrude on top so that would be one two three four five so in my inputs here on the height I'm going to put five oops there we go so and I'll adjust the position of these and then I want enough across here to be able to get a little shape to it so that I was going to do four for that. Um, a little sparse, but that, that should work. And then you'll notice I'm in the top view, so I'm in the orthographic view, and I'm going to adjust, uh, just start positioning some of these vertices. So when I marquee select like that, what it's doing is it's actually selecting multiple vertices. If you see on top, it's picking right through. So um, it's a good way to work at this stage. And I'm just going to try to match the shape of this. And I'm being sort of strategic here because I want to, uh, this, this piece I'm going to just extrude out of that area. And same at the bottom there, I'll extrude this piece out of here. And uh, maybe I'll just move these up a little bit just to kind of have a little flow there. I'm only going to model one half of it, and then afterwards I can mirror it. So um, perhaps I want another um, another slice here just to be able to get a little more detail there. I really like the. Um, the modeling toolkit and the uh, multi-cut tool for that. Hold down shift. Whoops. I'm sorry, wrong tool. Uh, oh yeah, I have to do it from outside, I believe. There we go. I'm just holding down shift and it just slices straight through the model like a laser beam. And then um, now I'm just going to switch back to my normal tool here. And Just get a little bit more shape there. Okay. And um, now I would like to extrude these pieces out. So it might be easier in the perspective view here. I'll take that and um, I can use this extrude. I'm actually pretty happy with this one over here. It's the same thing essentially anyways. And uh, click on here. I can scale that down a bit. Click on here, I can rotate it. Um, maybe one more extrude. Click on here, then rotate. Pull that out. I'll, I'll adjust it now from the top view. So let's go back to the top view. And uh, for, for wireframe, right mouse click, vertex, control, alt, and uh, click and drag to zoom in. And then uh, W for move, moving this over. All right, getting that looking okay. 
Um, yeah, I'm realizing now that I could probably, I actually don't need to uh, have this match up here so much. Um, I could probably move, for example, this down some, get some of that shape in. Because it really, it's it's this piece that needs to match, not this side. So, and just get that to kind of be in between. All right, uh, let's do the same down here. Let's extrude. So, right mouse click, face, select the face, extrude, pull it out a little bit, scale it down, rotate. Oops. Something like that. Maybe one more to give us a little bit more detail to work with. Okay, and then I'll fix that up again in the top view. Right mouse click, vertex. All right. It's starting to look like something. Um, I imagine it um, getting uh, thinner on the top and bottom here, kind of rounding off there. And uh, also, if I look at three at any time, I can see what this looks like in smooth mode. But I think I'll still move those in a little bit. So um, if I click on this vert and then shift double click here, see how it picks that whole row again. Shift select and then still holding shift double click pick that row and then hold shift still holding shift double click hold shift still holding shift double click so I've got those top and bottom rows I'm going to shoot R for scale and then I can push these guys in a little bit And again, three. All right. So um, I'm pretty happy with that basic shape. Obviously, I could spend more time on it, but it's just kind of getting started. So I right mouse click, change to face, and I'm going to delete half of this. And then um, because I was careful not to move any of these verts, um, I can see it's nice and straight there um, and right along the origin, right along the zero, which is going to work well when I go to polygons. Um, mesh mirror geometry options. Um, the mirror direction is negative x. You can tell by this little red x here that's the positive direction, so that's the negative direction. And we want to merge with the original and merge vertices. And that might not be the default settings. Yeah, it's not. So again, negative x, negative x merge with the originals, merge vertices, mirror. And so I have a nice uh, seamless model here three and one to see it in wireframe. We can we can smooth it later, but it's a good start. Um, it's always good to save your progress um, as you go, and it's good to save versions as well. Okay, so this I'm going to start out with a, with just a, um, well again, a cube, and we'll make it longer, and then I'm going to use a nice tool to make it easier for getting me a little, a little bit of bend in here. There's a tool called Bend that uh, helps with that. Um, and then I might, yeah, sort of extrude out the bottom there and extrude out here. So uh, go ahead and make a cube. It's hiding in the middle there. And just eyeball how big that should be. Yeah, it's probably proportional there. Scale it longer, um, and now I need more detail. So I'm going to change the subdivision height. And this time I'm not going to count. I'm just going to sort of make a bunch there, just to give me some to work with. And again, uh, under the animation menus, um, there's this nice create deformers nonlinear bend, and let's put this. If you see this, this green line in the middle there. And that's the controller that allows me to bend this. So I'll click on the word bend and curvature. And you can see uh, middle mouse dragging. Um, it 
helps me curb it. And that's that just speeds me up than trying to, you know, go through each vert and move, 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 move. Um, it's sort of a nice start to this shape. Um, I can see it actually gets fatter up here, so I'm going to have to make some adjustments. But again, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a start to, to speed up this process a little bit. Um, and uh, once I'm happy with that, I can do um, edit, delete by type history, and that will keep the shape, but get rid of that bend tool, get it out of my way. And um, yeah, I could just probably just manually move these from this point on. I mean, you could get fancy with the tool again, but uh, I think it's just as well. Let's uh, just manually match these to the. I'm just marquee selecting each vert and just lining it up with my um, source image here. Yeah, I mean, this is probably faster than trying to do some fancy thing. I'm probably going to do another little extrude at the end here to get that last bit out because um, I don't have quite enough geometry or detail there. And then I'll extrude out here as well to get um, this piece. And at the bottom, same idea. I'm going to move that all the way up there. Something like that. Okay. Um, so, um, five for shaded, right mouse click, face, pick that face on the edge, and extrude. It's already at kind of a nice angle. Maybe rotate that a little bit. Um, and then I might um, extrude, just move that up a little bit, and then might extrude again, and then kind of go in there, but then click on the scale, and then click on the middle scale and scale it down some. So I get that kind of rounded edge thing at the end. Just did three and then one again. Whoops. There. Okay. And, um, Okay, right mouse click, keep hitting my Windows key. I'll take all three of these at the same time and extrude it. And the default options, it should keep all those faces together. So, just scaling that down to fit a little bit better. And there's this nice trick, if I scale it this way, it will should kind of flatten that out. I might have to hit, um, go into the regular scale tool actually. And then um, when I scale this, it kind of flattens that out, which sort of cleans up the topology a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and extrude again. And um, move here. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, I'll, again, I'll just use the regular move tool. wireframe to see what I'm doing here. Oh wow, it's way thinner there. Huh. Okay. Control Alt draw a box here. Yeah, I'll have to adjust. That's fine. I'm just roughing it out right now. Um, I'll just clean it up, you know, in that view. Um, afterwards. Oh, that's really a mess. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it's scaling when I do that. I guess because I have three instead of one. So again, the regular, that's the, the tool I was using there was the, the multi-tool that happens when you extrude, and now I'm just using the regular transform tools to make these last few adjustments. And then again, one more time, and move that, and then scale that down. Okay, so now i got to clean up my work here. Uh, Move that down. Probably doesn't need to be so far in there. All right. This one can. 
can go up just to sort of even out the topology a little bit. Yeah, might need another. I could go ahead and um, maybe use that nice uh, cut thing I like for that here, just to get a little extra detail here. Uh, Multi-cut. Just I'll just go straight, and then whoops, I have to be in object mode actually when I do that. I believe. Multi-cut. Here, hold down shift to get a straight line, and then again Q for selection. You know, right mouse vertex, and then I go back to adjusting. Get that a little closer. Good. Okay. It's coming together, more or less. All right, last one here. Um, and go ahead and extrude. Yeah, I'll use this one. Hope I didn't do that twice there. Let me just undo, because I was a little worried I might have hit it twice. Um, and then again, oops, it's acting a little weird to me. I'll just use the regular rotate rather than the, the one that comes with the extrude thing. I'll scale that last guy in. Look at it in the top view and just, again, four for wireframe. And looks like I... Might, no, I think I'm all right. Actually, something looks a little wrong here. Yeah, I'm not... I think I rotate it. Let me undo. I think I did a, a bad rotate where it made those things not lined up in the front view anymore. So let's fix that just from here. Okay, so those are lined up again. Right, whoops, right mouse click face. Extrude it, move it out. Yeah, it's easy to kind of hit the wrong rotate. Yeah, see, like, right now I clicked on that one, and I didn't really want that one. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's just go back and line these up a little better. Oh, yeah, pretty good. All right. Um, go ahead and save. And uh, yeah, frankly, I'm pretty happy at this point. Um, of course, I can go further. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, that should be fine. Um, I'll go ahead and smooth. Yeah, it's about the right idea. Of course, you can get more detailed than that. Um, but, uh, but essentially that concept, I think like this might need to be pulled in a little bit more. So um, to make that easy to do, I'm just going to pick this center vertice. Oops. It's a little bit of a mess there about from here. So I've got that. Might be good to uh, show isolate select for a moment just to make sure. Uh, I think something seems a bit wrong about this. Um, I appear to have made some mistake. So I'm going to go back to before I smooth it. And let's isolate select and see if I can find out what I've done here. Oh. So that's no good. Um, 
So I'm selecting those two edges. I'm going to use the scale and then put that back. Yeah, I just made a mistake there. Okay, must have made an error when I was scaling that originally. So, uh, okay, that's where that was a problem. Show, isolate, select, you selected. And let's go ahead and smooth that again. Okay, that's looking better. That's why that was so kind of strange. And um, let's isolate that again. Yeah, see that looks more normal now. I'm going to pick this vert right here and hit B for soft select tool. And if you hold down B and then click and drag with the uh, left mouse button, you can see it's changing the amount of area that it's influencing. So I just want to be able to pull this end in a little bit more. Um, because it sort of intersects that. So there we go. And let's repeat that with uh, this guy here. Oops. Is that, do I have the right one? Yeah, I think I do. Okay. And again, I keep going back to the orthographic view to make these adjustments so I don't do like weird movements and 3D. Okay, I mean, that's about as far as I was thinking of taking it. Um, of course, you can continue to make small adjustments here, and you know I like using that soft select to help with that. These guys, I mean, it's a little bit hard to tell um, what those are supposed to look like, but really, I, I might just take. Um, I'll probably just take a polysphere and um, show polygons, and just kind of. Uh, adjust it, you know, rotate it, and uh, scale it this way. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of guesswork here. Um, what this thing is supposed to look like, I don't really know. And then flatten it, you know. That's pretty believable. Um, there's this, uh, I'm just going to delete that real quick. There is this cool other uh, deformer thing I like. Um, let me just keep it straight, but again, try to, I'm going to get it sort of close to the idea of that shape first. And then um, I like this, let's get it flatter. I like this tool, the uh, flare tool. Um, create nonlinear a flare and a channel box. Click on the flare, and it it just it sort of helps you adjust the. Oops, that's not it. The start X. Yeah, see how we can kind of get these sort of interesting shapes here. Um, so it helps it kind of look like less of a sphere when you do that. Um, so it already is a bit more of an interesting shape. And then, so I'll delete that history on that. And then I, the other one I like is a, a lattice. It's real helpful. And I can take like the lattice points and um, oh, I might I still have soft select on. I just hit B to turn that off. I should probably be doing it this at this point, sort of more over where the, the object itself is. Let's do that. I'm going to delete history. Um, Let's see, maybe I won't rotate it and I'll just use the lattice to kind of, maybe we'll rotate a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Um, and then I can still make another lattice. And, uh, just, oops, oops, select these lattice points. Scale those in a little bit. 
move these guys in, move those in, you know, something like that, select the object, delete by type history, and, you know, and then do something similar for the other ones. Um, again, mostly just like a flattened sphere. And, uh, yeah, for this guy, um, just to uh, mirror it across, um, it's not really what mirror geometry is for, generally. Um, what you can do is um, uh, just scale it to negative one across. Um, So um, kind of the sloppy way of doing that is if I do control G, which is edit group, um, it puts the, you know, a zeroed out transform right in the middle and then control D, which is edit duplicate. And I have a second one on top of it there. And then the second one, I just type minus one. Boop, there it is on the other side. And then of course I can do the same thing. Control G, control D, minus one. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the quick uh, steering wheel tutorial, and um, I hope this is helpful. Thanks.